Well, the academia sure is busy during the day. Hmm. But where should we go looking for people that we know? Traveler, Paimon. Sino! It's been so long since we last saw you! As do you. You don't seem wary at all from your travels. If anything, you seem stronger. So, what brings you back here? Oh, nothing in particular. Paimon just... saw a really big mushroom out on the road the other day and suddenly missed all our friends in Smeru. Funnily enough, we were reminiscing about you recently, too. It was at a group dinner. I look forward to hearing about your travels. Something tells me we must have a lot to catch up on. Really? You were thinking of us, too? What a coincidence! Indeed. Or as I call it, the beer yoni factor. You really want me to say the rest? <laughs> okay. It's always rice to meet Stu again. Oh, darn, he said it. Hmm, you like that one, huh? You must if you remember it after all this time. Admit the truth. You have long been in awe of my razor-sharp wit. All right, all right, here's your 500, Mora. <sighs> You're exaggerating. It's only 500 mora. Hey! 500 mora is still a lot of snacks to Paimon! <laughs> Alright. I'll treat you to some desserts later. Anyway, I'm actually investigating a case right now. My mind is focused on work, which is why I didn't complete the joke at first. A case? What happened? Nothing major. But after finding out who was involved, I decided, on reflection, to handle this one myself. Need any help? We only came here to hang out, so we've got the time. You may as well take us with you, and then when you're done, we can, uh, you know... Such enthusiasm. <laughs> Are you worried I'll forget about treating you to some sweets if you're not around to remind me? What? No! <laughs> Alright, was it really that obvious? Obvious enough. Still, it's a fine idea. You are the heroes of Sumeru. It makes perfect sense to work together. All right, follow me. You see him? The old man flailing around? Oh, is he the one you wanted to talk to about the case? Correct. His name is Cyrus, a former Spontamont sage. He taught both me and Lisa. Huh? Sino's teacher is in trouble? It's ridiculous. I'm just an old man who enjoys a spot of gardening, shopping, and wine. What sort of person targets an old retiree? <sighs> Professor, I've brought some friends. Ah, Sino. Now who do we have here? Hmm. Hold on, let me think. A flying fairy dressed in white? A youth who does not seem to hail from this land? My goodness. You must be the legendary Traveler and Paimon. I've heard all about what you've done for Sumeru. Wow, looks like we're really famous! I've told him about you before. You are my friends, after all. That's right. Let me summarize the situation. A couple of days ago, Professor Cyrus suddenly received a threat letter. A threat letter? Exactly. Who sends a threat letter to an old man like me, for goodness sake? This is the letter in question. 
Cyrus, I have uncovered your secret. If you wish to prevent it from going public, leave 10 million mora at the back door of the cafe. Secondly, don't come looking for me. You'll never find me. But I will always be watching you and all of your secrets. Finally, if you dare to report this to the Matra, there will be consequences. Wow, they sure didn't mince their words. Clearly, this person must be desperate for Mora. Ten million Mora, what a joke. I'm just a single retiree with nothing to my name beyond the tomatoes in my garden. Where do people think I'm hiding ten million Mora, huh? In my tomatoes? There were no witnesses, so currently the letter is all we've got. So, Traveler, Paimon, let's put our heads together. Paimon's ready, too! All right, take a look. Do you see anything suspicious? Very good. The paper has a rather rough texture. It's not the typical kind you see in most books. Another thing is, some of these strokes look kind of blurry. Could there be an issue with the ink? Possibly. And I bet the paper has something to do with it. Uh, most of the paper around here is much smoother than this, and the ink is absorbed quickly so it doesn't run. This paper, meanwhile, it's uh, very coarse-grained. Almost as if it's... Made from some sort of plant matter. It's certainly not the same paper as we use in the academia. But the ink is nothing special. Just regular black ink that gets a blue tinge when applied to paper. Hmm, so do we think the culprit has a connection with the academia or not? Wait, check this out! Looks like this part got wet at some point. Huh, agreed. The staining suggests it was a colored liquid, not plain water. It also looks like it was wiped off with a damp cloth. A colored liquid, so... tea? Wine? Looks like we're thinking along similar lines. Let's go talk to Aroth. There are some things I'll need him to take care of. Mahamatra Sino, Sir Cyrus, ah, and the Traveler and Paimon. It's been a while. As such, I'm inclined to believe that the culprit in this case is a student at the Academia. Somebody young and strapped for cash. Oh, one last thing. I'd start your investigation by taking a look at the cafes in the city. Culprits spilled their coffee on the ladder, huh? They do look like coffee stains to me. Also, if I'm not mistaken, the letter is written on a type of scented paper that has aromatics added during the manufacturing process. The kind often provided as writing material for customers in cafes and taverns. Ah, uh, of course. Yes, like they sell in the gift shops. I remember now. Zaha Hadi bought some a while back. She said she was going to use it as wrapping paper for a vase. Understood. I'll assemble a team to investigate the points of interest immediately. You have my gratitude. One last thing. Send some matra to guard the entrances and exits of Sumeru City. And change into plain clothes. Don't let them see you coming. Will do.
great thinking, Zino. So, where do we think the culprit's at right now? Yeah, they've probably been lying low at home waiting to see how Cyrus reacts. Hmm. You're right, Paimon. Really? <gasps> Which part? The culprit's approach. Whatever happens, they need this Mora. But just because they warned Professor Cyrus not to go to the Matra doesn't mean they know what he'll do next. So, like you said, they need to wait and see. And crucially, the culprit said they'd be watching the professor's every move. Huh? Wait, are you saying... Found you! <gasps> what are you doing? You wrote the threat letter. I... I don't know what you're talking about. What threat letter? I sensed someone was watching us from the shadows the moment we entered the house of Dana. You managed to stay relatively well hidden for someone reckless enough to threaten Professor Cyrus. There are a lot of people here, but we were looking specifically for Arov. Whoever followed us the whole way was likely to be the culprit. I... I was just listening in, that's all. You know something big's going down when Mahamatra Sino shows up, right? So I got a little curious. What's the big deal? You smiled when Arav left. I saw it as clear as day. Is smiling a crime now? There are coffee stains on the letter. You mixed some coffee with water, gently smeared it onto the paper, then wiped it off with a wet cloth. All to create the impression that the letter was written at a cafe. Closing off the exits to the city doesn't affect you, because you already live here. And as long as the Matra were focused on the cafes, you would be free from scrutiny. The cafe was a red herring all along. You had to be somewhere where you could monitor the professor's movements. You can't pin this on me! I haven't done anything! Really? Then why are you shaking like a leaf? The innocent have no reason to fear the Matra. But you... Your heart's racing, and your eyelids are twitching. You're a terrible liar. I, I would never... Don't try anything or you'll pay the price. Now come with me. Over quickly, Sino already caught the guy! You're telling me. One minute I go out for a quick smoke, the next minute I see Arav already on his way back to meet up with Sino. Ah, looked like a young guy, too. Couldn't have been much more than 30. But after what he's done, I'm afraid he's ruined his whole future. Everyone, it's all over. Gosh, that was so the culprit's name is Raka, a 16-year-old student in the Rataoist Darshan. Huh? 16? Cyrus thought he looked 30-something! We checked his records. He's 16, a third-year student. But he looks so old. Yeah, seriously! Ah, uh, foolish child. He's too young for the criminal life. What the devil drove him down this path? We question the culprit regarding his motives. He... um... Oh, just spit it out. Nothing can surprise me at this point. Very well. It's our understanding that Araka is a mediocre student who has been underperforming in his classes. He started taking extra tutoring to improve his grades, but developed a gambling habit around the same time and lost a lot of Mora. Down on his luck, he went to the tavern for a drink and overheard some people chatting about Sir Cyrus's comfortable retirement. They mentioned that he's always arguing about his tomato plants with some old woman on the street. Some old woman on the street? Goodness gracious, has that rascal attended a single one of his classes? That 
old woman is Kesharwar's very own professor, Zaha Hadi. How can he not know who Zaha Hadi is? Is this going somewhere? Oh, right, yes. Uh, uh, so another thing. We don't just argue about tomato plants. And what are they trying to insinuate by comfortable retirement? A man grows a few vegetables and suddenly he's living a life of luxury? Maybe it's more the fact that you have the time to grow vegetables in the first place. Araka mentioned he'd heard a rumor, alleging that Sir Cyrus illegally obtained a large sum of money from the desert before retiring and kept it for himself instead of reporting it to the Academia. Araka believes this money to be the reason why Sir Cyrus hasn't kept up with any academic research or other projects since his retirement. And given your advanced age, he thought you'd be an easy target to blackmail. Oh, a rocker. I'm at a loss for words. I'm so angry I don't know where to start. People make up rumors all the time. I am quite confident that Professor Cyrus has never embezzled a mora in his life. Arav, you'll have to find some excuse to interrogate Araka again later. I need you to deliver a few firm fistfuls to him on my behalf. I completely understand how you feel, Sir Cyrus. But I'm afraid that course of action goes against the Matra's principles. <sighs> Professor, there's no need to be childish about this. Oh, come on. I was clearly joking. Uh, okay. Where does this go from here? The Academia will determine the appropriate disciplinary action against the student. And as for the individuals spreading rumors about the Professor's obsession with tomatoes, and some old woman on the street. There could be a slander case here. The Matra will continue to investigate. Who said I'm obsessed with some old woman on the street? Mind your wording or you'll start a whole new rumor. You seem confused. <laughs> Don't you understand? Uraka is just a young boy who made a very rash and very stupid decision based on some groundless rumor he heard. Besides, I didn't actually hand over any mora to him. The whole thing sounds a lot worse than it is. All it costs me is a little reputational damage. That's all. Please rest assured, Professor, that the Academia will issue a fair and reasonable punishment. Yes, I have no doubt about that. But as a former educator, I'd still like to have a serious conversation with the boy's parents. The family lives in the city, yes? Correct. We looked into the family. Both parents are merchants, and they're often away on business. They've never taken much of an active role in their children's lives. Oh, what a mess. You don't have to seal the evidence away yet, do you? I'd like to have that letter back for the time being, if possible. I need something concrete for when I talk to the family tonight. We have to show them how serious this situation is. The relevant authorities have already reviewed the evidence and are now discussing Araka's punishment. You can hold on to the letter for now. Just make sure to return it within a couple of days. Oh, so you'll be able to close the case in two days. Give or take. Cases like this are quick to resolve. Very good. Well, thank you for all your help. Perhaps we can all go for a meal together. Oh, my treat, of course. My apologies, Sir Cyrus, but I have a prior commitment. Enjoy the meal, everyone. Ah, I see. Well, that's a pity. But, Sino, you have to come. You found the culprit at record speed, and I owe you for that. Ah, and is a Tainari in town at the moment? Bring him along, too. Wait, you mean Tainari's in the city? He is. Tainari's master, Sir Nephis, called him and Kale to the Academia to help out on a project. They should be at Nephis's office at this hour. Though I must say, I'm surprised you're extending an invitation to Tainari. Did you do something to offend Sir Nephis? Don't be outrageous. Nephis offends me all the time. It's never the other way around. Anyway, hurry up and fetch Tainari. I'll head over to the tavern with the Traveler and Paimon. See you there. Uh, go on now. Don't keep us waiting.